Welcome everyone to our online service. And as you see, I'm excited about this message, one thing. But before we get into the message, I just kind of want to say Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Christmas is behind us. And I love Christmas, but I'm so glad it's behind us. But I'm looking forward to this new year. And I just want to start with just picking a bone that I have about the new year. It's these New Year resolutions. To be honest, I don't like them. I never have liked them. In fact, I did a little research. 70% of Americans love New Year resolutions. What I discovered is 40% fail and drop that New Year's resolution during the first week. In my Valentine's, another 75% drop the ball. And so why do we do these New Year resolutions? And why do we drop the ball on them? And I'm firmly convinced the reason is because most of the time, New Year's resolutions are about us. It's about me losing weight, me getting a better job, me making more money, my vacations, traveling the world, which is fine. It's awesome if that happens. But you've heard me say this before, if you've been hanging around River of Life for a while, we're not that good. In and of ourselves, we're not that interesting. And I'm going to propose that instead of making a New Year's resolution, we do a New Year revelation. I'm really excited about the New Year Revelation. You say, what? what do you mean, revelation? Well, a revelation is from God. You've heard people say, hey, God, God revealed something to me. That means God has spoken to them through the word or through prayer or through a dream or through a vision, and that's a revelation. God, God has that in store for us. So I'm proposing to say no to New Year resolutions and yes to New Year revelation. But here's where it gets interesting. In preparing for this message, I looked up different verses with the phrase, one thing in them. And what's the one thing that God really has for us? And I think the biggest one thing of all time is God himself, where we encounter God this year. We actually experience his presence this new year. Like he reveals who he is, not just his hand, not just his feet, but he is a person, like his essence. And I'm really excited about this. And in my study, no one really understood this as well as David. He's, he just nails it in Psalm 27. This is the biggest one thing. David says this, One thing I ask the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. So when David says this, he's not saying that 24-7, I kind of want to be in the temple, I want to be experiencing God. No, what David is saying is 24-7, I want to experience God, whether I'm in the temple or out of the temple. And that was his, man, that was his mantra. And, and God delivered that message to him. He delivered himself to him. But when I kind of say, you know, let's make this next year all about receiving who God is. Let's make it a revelation rather than a resolution. What is, how do we do that? Practically, how do we do that? And this is where the study got really interesting because I looked up that phrase, one thing in the Bible, and I, it, it, all these different verses with one thing, and I kind of looked at them all, and there's a pattern there. In order to really experience who God is, we have to let go of something, we have to grab something, and we have to claim something. When it comes to letting go of something, because that's where we have to start, no one speaks into that as well as the Apostle Paul. And I think he speaks into it so well because he was a crazy daredevil for God. He just loved God. And, and, and when he was against God, man, he was so against God. He was a hot and cold guy. But he says this in Philippians chapter 3. I love this passage. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible. I want to know Christ. And so that's, that's his mantra. I want that revelation. I want to know God. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. So to get ahead, first he had to forget and leave something behind. And scholars have been debating for years, what did the Apostle Paul have to leave behind? And they don't really know, but my guess is that perhaps it's because of just personal pain that, that before he was a Jesus freak, he was so against the church, and he, and he basically ordered Stephen, the first Christian, to be martyred, and he oversaw that. And maybe he was struggling with guilt. 
Or maybe it was just personal, physical anguish because when he became a Jesus freak man, people came after him. He was beaten five times. He was whipped 40 lashes each time. He was beaten with rods three times. He was in a shipwreck. He was stoned. I'm not talking about a Rocky Mountain stone high. I'm talking he was stoned. I mean, he was almost died. So he had all this stuff going on, and, and I'm not sure what it was. No one's sure what he had to let go, but he had to let go of something to take hold of something else God had from. So we have to start by letting go of something, and it's not easy. But if you really want to have a good ride, you've got to let go of something. The first of my experiences in a vivid way was seven years ago when I got on an airplane and I decided I'm going to jump from this airplane. I went with a bunch of friends. We were flying up, going up like this. took forever to get way high. They open up the door and say, Dave, you're on. And they open up that door and say, no problem. And I sling my legs, I sit and I sling my legs across over this plane that's, of course, moving. And they have this bar up there and I'm holding it for dear life. And they said, okay, count to three and just swing yourself out. I counted to three. I'm not going anywhere, man. I was hanging on for dear life. They literally, and I hate to admit this because it makes me sound like a coward, they literally had to come and peel my fingers and almost push me out. But when I let go, man, I had that freedom. You can only grab onto something new, until, but first you have to let go. So the question is, this new year, what do you have to let go of? What's holding you back from this relationship with God of encountering God and all he has for you? And maybe it's some of the people you hang out with. Maybe you have to say no and find some new friends. Uh, maybe it's guilt. Maybe it's shame. Uh, maybe you're struggling with something that you said or didn't say, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a sinful thing or, 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 or a bad action. Perhaps, perhaps you're spending too much time on social media. Perhaps you're just hanging out of that so much where perhaps you should take like a social media fast, like three, four hours a day, you know, during waking hours. Don't get on social media. You have to let go of something. Like, like maybe even you're a blended family. We have a lot of blended families at the church. When Ann and I have a blended family, when we started our blended family 20 years ago, we got together and I said, well, we do this on Christmas. We do this on Christmas. We do this on New Year's. We do this on New Year's. You know, we had to let go of the stuff we did to come up with some new stuff. So I'm just asking you, when it comes to this revelation from God, we want to encounter God. It starts with letting go of something. And so just take some time today. Talk it over in your small groups. Pray, ask God, what do I have to let go of? And he will respond. I mean, he will tell you. I mean, if you have that heart to, where, where you want to make, you want to encounter him and you want to let go, for, get that whole action going, he will, I'm, I promise you, he will speak to you either through the word, through a dream, through a vision, through another person. It's going to be awesome. So the first thing we have to do is let go of something, but then we have to hang on to something. And no one speaks into this as good as Jesus. It's an interesting story in Mark chapter 10 where this young ruler kind of walks up to Jesus. He had a little bit of money. And he said to Jesus, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to him. He kind of could tell he had an agenda. And Jesus kind of said, well, kind of keep all the commandments. You know, don't kill, don't murder, don't cheat, don't steal. And he said, well, I've kept all these since I was a kid. And then Jesus looked at him and he said something to him that he's never said to anyone else. I just love this. Jesus looked at him and he loved him. So what he's going to say next is out of love. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. So first off, you have to give something up. For him it was his material wealth. Give up all your money. But now you have to grab something. Then come follow me. Jesus is saying, I want you to embrace and grab on to my agenda. Now, what's, what's God's agenda? Well, God's agenda for us as a church is to help people find and follow Jesus. And so you should ask yourself, uh, how am I helping in that process? How am I helping people find 
and follow Jesus? Like, for example, am I witnessing? Am I even praying for, for God to send people or to give me courage and boldness in my life to share the joy that God's given me, to share that joy with others? Am I praying for people? Am, am I, am I, do, I, do I have a caring heart? Am I part of a small group where I can get accountability and dive into God's Word and ask the good hard questions and hold each other accountable and do ministry together? Am I, am I serving? Maybe this year God wants you to serve uh, at River of Life or serve in some parachurch organization. Am I giving financially? This is a huge area because God says, man, if you give financially, I will bless you. And we, we have this whole 90-day challenge at the church, and people are jumping on board. It's really exciting. It's not too late for you to jump on board with this 90-day challenge. For 90 days, you, you tithe, you give 10% of your earned monies uh, to the ministry here at River of Life, and, and you watch how God will bless you, and then we'll take that money and put that right into ministry. But the question is, what do you have to grab onto for God's agenda? And again, don't just give a flippant answer. Really take time to pray. And maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're right now you're like, well, hey, hold on, man. I'm already going to church most every Sunday or Wednesday night. I'm already uh, in a small group. I'm already serving. I'm already giving financially. I mean, what more do you want? Well, maybe God wants to take you deeper in one of those areas. Maybe he wants to take you deeper into your small group where, where you know, you go way beyond news, weather, and sports and you start really getting into the stuff, really doing ministry together. Maybe he wants you to come in on Sunday mornings as we discover Jesus, our Wednesday nights is coming in just <laughs> jacked up to meet God and saying, hey, let's meet God, let's encounter God in this worship service. You know, maybe it's serving at a deeper level or serving in an area where God's going to stretch you. Maybe it's giving even more money financially, but... But it, it never ends with what God has for us. And if our goal is to, like, say no to, to New Year's resolution, but yes to New Year revelation and experiencing God, who he is, like having an encounter with God, I'm telling you right now, you have to let go of something and you have to grab onto something that's on God's agenda. And you will be so fulfilled, it's going to be awesome. Now, most people stop here, but there's more. We, just, we have to not only, you know, say, you know, no to something, say yes to something, we have to claim something. And I'm going right back to King David because he really understood this, and it's in Psalm 56, but let me explain the context before we get there. David is running for his life from Saul. David has actually been anointed as the king, but Saul won't let him be king, and he's chasing after him, and David's panicking, and he runs down right into this village, and it's a village with a bunch of Philistines. Now, if you know the story, the Philistines don't like David because David has already killed Goliath, their he-man. He chopped his head off. They remember David. And so David is amongst these Philistines. He has nowhere to run. He doesn't know what to do. And I love what he does here. This one thing I know, God is for me. I am trusting God. Oh, praise his promises. I'm not afraid of anything mere man can do to me. Yes, praise his promises. And guess what? He claimed that promise because that's who God is. God promised him he would be king. So he just, he stepped right into that promise. And God delivered him from that situation. And so what I want to do is I want to give seven promises to claim. But I only want you to claim one. For this year one of these promises and i'm just going to go over them rather quickly because these are amazing promises but think about which one of these should i claim for me this year to draw me to that relationship with god or literally encounter him here's the first one i will not say i can't because the bible says i can do all things through christ who gives me strength hey I'm just telling you right now, we all have friends, we all have family, and some of them, their favorite thing to say is, I can't. They're the Eeyores of life. They're not Tiggers at all. They're just, we can't do it, we'll never make it, it's not going to work. Perhaps this is your promise that you have to claim. Don't even say the words, I can't. Don't utter them from your lips. 
In fact, say, I can do all things through Christ. Because what do you want to do here? You want to encounter God. You want to experience God, man, where he just moves you and your, your faith is real and it's vibrant. And, and God's going to bless that. that. That promise is for a number of you out there right now. Check out this one. I will not fear, because God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear holds so many back. Parents, this is a great promise to give your kids. A great promise to give your kids. I mean, growing up, going to school, going to art class, going to athletic events, man, they're so filled with fear. Am I going to fit in? And you just, you, you have them memorize this, or you speak this into them. I will not fear. We're full of power, love, and a sound mind. That's a great verse for you parents. Here's another one. I will not be weak because the Lord, the strength of my life, I will display strength and take action because I know God. I will not be weak. Some of you have been beaten up. You've been battered, like crushed at all sides. And, 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 and you know, your spirit feels weak. This is where you just rise up and you live by faith, not feelings, and say, you know what? I've given my life to Jesus. I'm going to claim this promise. He's the strength of my life, and I'm going to take action. I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to go for it with what God has given me. That is a great promise for a lot of you out there. Check out this one. I really like this one. I will not be depressed. Listen, there's so many people that struggle with depression, and I understand that one time I struggled with depression, I was actually on some medication to help balance because I was going through so much loss. And I understand. I will not be depressed because I recall to mind God's loving kindness, compassion, faithfulness, and in him I have hope. Hope. That's the bottom line. And God can give you that hope. The opposite of depression is hope. People who are depressed have hope no hope. They're not even angry. They're apathetic. They have nothing to fight for. I've been there before. And what helps me, at times I've had to take medication. I'm just admitting that to you. What also helps me is the Word of God. The Word of God that, that you just believe it. And again, you live by faith. You don't feel it. And a lot of you, this is what you need. You need more than drugs. You need some Jesus' Word of Promises in you. Check this one out. I will not have a persecution complex knowing that nobody can be against me when God is for me. You know, there's so many people, I, I meet with a lot of people, like they, they walk in a room and they think, everyone's looking at me, everyone's against me. You know, now they, they feel that way, that's their perspective, but it's just not true. And I take them to this word in Romans 8, 31. No one can be against you if you're for God. Because if you're for God, God is for you. If you're saying, you know, no to New Year's resolution, yes to a revelation of God, like to encounter God, are you kidding me? I mean, he's going to take that persecution complex right away from you. You're going to walk in a new confidence. It's going to be great. Let's move on here. I will not feel like a failure because I am a conqueror in all things through Christ. It's just amazing when I meet with people who are very successful, and they still feel like they're a failure. And they're successful by really helping other people, by doing really good, redemptive, wonderful things. And that's just a lie from the enemy. I will not feel like a failure because I am a conqueror in all things through Christ. And this is a promise for some of you to claim that you just, you don't feel as if you're that worthy. This is a promise you have to claim. And this is kind of like where I want to end because this is just huge. I have been redeemed and forgiven for all my sins. You know, we all sin. We all do things. We all hurt people at other times when we don't mean to hurt them. Maybe we do. Sometimes we, we say things we shouldn't say. Sometimes we just do things that we shouldn't do. We, we're, we're all there. But According to this verse, this promise, once you receive Jesus 
as your Savior. Once you acknowledge your sin and, he, and you receive him as your Savior to save you from that sin, all your sins are washed away and the enemy can't come in and bother you with those. They're, they're absolutely washed away. And so will, will you consider one of those promises this year? Would you consider saying no to your New Year's resolution? Now, maybe, 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 maybe it's really good, that's fine, but, but saying yes to a New Year revelation of in, wanting to encounter God. I mean, to encounter God. And the way you do that is you have to let go of something. What do you have to let go of? What do you have to grab on God's agenda that he has for you? And what do you have to claim and walk in power and truth and love, one of the promises of God? And I just want to also say to you, if you've never received Jesus as your Savior, you can do that right now just by acknowledging uh, your sin and your need for a Savior and just calling out to God, saying, God, save me. I want to begin this relationship with you right now, today, this very minute. And that's a great way to start off the year. Hey, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm looking forward to next Sunday. We're going to kick off a new series called Homies that you've already heard about. It's going to be awesome. And I will see you next Sunday.